do this to create awesome techno drops. That is today's video. Let's go do it right now. Yo, what's up? It's Analog Kitchen, and thank you for checking out yet another video. If this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe, hit that bell, you'll be updated whenever I upload a new video. You'll be kept in the loop, you won't miss out on anything. Stefan Ralescu, David Casas, Stephen Carr, Vencisco, Philip Beck, G, and Chris Kotsis. Those are my new patrons, and they're following me on patreon.com slash analog kitchen. I'm in the process of building a mixer. It's looking absolutely fantastic. Filter section's done. The input section is getting there. It really sounds absolutely awesome. And it's a very cool project. I do believe there is a gap in between a club mixer and a studio mixer, obviously. So I'm thinking there might be something for us dollies out there to actually get a mixer that will help us in our performance. I mean, you buy all this expensive gear, right? And then in the end, you just uh, take like a, what, a small Mackie mixer or a Behringer mixer to the stage. Come on, what's that all about? Also, I'm upping the ante and I'm really focusing on getting my content better for you guys. Thanks ever so much, you new subscribers out there. It's really amazing. Patreon is connected to Discord. So on Discord is a really cool community that is growing and we're going in the right direction. Everybody talks about their dollar setups. They talk about stuff. There's also a lot of uh, PCB um, uh, DIY guys out there. So I'm trying to just like combine a whole community of like-minded synthers together. And it's really cool. And uh, probably after this video, there is a video party. So head over to Patreon enlist on the higher tiers get yourself out there on discord and we'll see you in there head over to bandcamp if you like the jam because most often most times i'll just chop the jam into bite-sized segments and i will just upload it there so you can also check that out as well as affiliate links to the equipment that i'm using is noted in the fold below so click on the page the page will open and hallelujah magically all those affiliate links will appear so you can find out what it is that i'm actually using it's all about the drop you know the drop is something that is uh, widely overlooked when you're doing a dollar set because yeah when you're working with synthesizers and sequences and drum computers you keep uh, working loops and you keep working sequences and they all go inside so that's cool but the drop is one of the most important parts of a dollar's performance because in the end of the day, it's what kicks everybody in the butt. It's what set your record up. It's what set you up to the next level. So it does something with the transitions as well. I did another video on transitions. Uh, I might do one in the future as well because drops and transitions closely together. The drop, the breakdown, that one part in the track where anticipation builds, where you actually uh, come dense everything that you've done into something else into something new one of the coolest things when i drop down my track is the fact that if i came up with something really cool that's when everybody including myself just gets to that point that we go like oh this is amazing you know because when you're doing a live set most often times you're trying to just like get to a mutual understanding with the crowd where you make a musical suggestion, the crowd picks up on it, then they will give you some energy back and that is something you can uh, transform back into your live set and that's absolutely amazing if it works. And the longer the set takes, the better the communication with the crowd starts to go and people figure out what it is that you're doing. It's, it, it might be difficult to think of how do you're going to do it because if you now have to stop a lot of uh, equipment all at the same time, it might be hard. I have a, well, it's not a trick, but I've got a method of doing it. Um, are you using the multi-clock as well? I mean, a lot of people are like, why are you using the multi-clock? It's a very expensive machine. It doesn't really make any sound. I understand it. But you know what? In the end of the day, um, if it's just me, it's just me wielding those machines. And if I want to drop down my record, it's very cool if I can just like turn stuff off and turn stuff on. Uh, also in a sense that it just gets counted in or counted out. Live in the same street, not in the same house, but it's pretty much the same thing because you would love that anticipation, that apotheosis of, you know, just breaking down the track and working on that climax. But how do you do it? And how can you get your synths to just like work with you? Now, um, it was something that I needed to 
figure out myself as well. And it's obvious that it's easy to do when you're working with a door because then you just uh, stick a lot of white noise on there and you're pretty much set. But if you want to do that in an analog sort of like way, the way I do it, it takes a bit of pre preparation. But it also, uh, it's not what you add. Sometimes it's what you just uh, dilute from the total picture. And that is something I would like to get into today. So let's head over to the live set and let's see if we, you and me, you dollars camera out there, let's see if you can make it work. Now, in the box, uh, briefly, for your new uh, cats out there, the Octatrack is linked up to the Akai MPC Live. They both switch in time. So here, going to a different sequence, which is what it's called in the MPC, uh, or a pattern, will mean uh, that a different pattern will switch in the Octatrack instantly as well as well as banks so i've set up the, uh, in a way that uh, the banks that i've got selected here a to h are the same with here as well so bank b will go to bank b and then the patterns will switch accordingly uh, via midi cc message i'll do another video uh, on I'll do a, vi a different video on that uh, in the near future now, they Smith Tetra, the Model D, the Mini Tower, they're all going through the Octatrack, getting summed in the Octatrack so I can put effects on there as well, and then they'll go uh, to the mixer. I've got... My friend over here, which is the Mini Log XD. Into space mode. And my friend over here, turn it on, the SH-101, there's a micro, how do you think it's micro on the here? The SH-101 goes through the space echo. Nice one. And then obviously the TBO-3, which is playing a nice asset line right now. Now the thing to build up the track, pretty much, with the Launch Control XL being uh, MIDI mapped to the Akai MPC Live. Let's um, add stuff to what we've got right now. Nice one. Well, I got my kick uh, going. space what we like so i've got the drums mapped so don't have the menu dive into the akai and a good pace today 130 bpm the exit box uh, is over here by erica since i uh, usually read my uh, octa track through there the different outputs but for today uh, let's head in a different direction Now, I'm going to add a sound with the Model D. Let's see what it plays here. I've got my tracks already laid out, which means that I'm going to look for the track. It's track 12 in this case. Let's create a techno sound on uh, the Model D so that we can get something going. We just going in the in the right direction. I like it. Got a close head as well here. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit in going in a little bit aggressive. That's what I should say. I'm not breaking my tongue here. So, okay, so the first oscillator is always uh, the top one. That one's on a square wave. All right, let's see if we can just uh, record that. Go in, I'll shorten the notes that it needs to be repeating. Turn it on. Nice. Okay. 
Now I'm going to add a little bit more flavor to this sound. So the attack is all the way down because I want a short note that needs to sit within my techno groove. Turn on the second oscillator. It's the same waveform, square wave, the first one, but the octave is up one step from the 32 here, so that means 60. There's a bit of noise on there. What I'm going to do also is introduce a little bit of overload. Now the third oscillator. I'm going to put a little bit of reverb on there. Okay, a reverb here. What have we got? Dark verb. Yes, I got it. Nice. Turn it up. As you can hear. This is immediately a drop. Nice. I got a bit of air candy in the background that are stuck on here, which is a tom, and that tom sound, I stuck it in a um, reverb, and it comes in occasionally. There it is. Let's build it up. Right. Now I'm going to add the SH101 because that's uh, also something I would like to add into the equation. Let's first see what we can play. I'm going to lower the Model D. I think I'm going to edit it a little bit because the second note that is playing the pop pop. Let's just go in and just delete that last note. Pop pop. Pump. So what I want is to play like mm, ah, 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 ah. So you can hear that it's actually accenting the, the top note on the uh, bass line right here. Because when I'm going to make my drop, I want the two things to play together, but then I can actually emphasize a note on the TBO3, which you're going to see. Let's, let's create a drop. This is the first drop that I think that I would do. I will take out the kick, open up a... I'll play around with the delay. Instantly. Put some reverb on the Model D then. There you go. On to the next phase. Cool. Now let's uh, see if we can add an arpeggio with this. Now because I put this on a major chord, the Model D, I'm going to slightly change that high note, listen, so this one, so it will sit better in the beat as, and play the same note as what's playing here on the arpeggio. Alright, now let's turn this off. 
Now what I like to do when I'm making my drops is create a little bit of tension. Obviously, I've got my uh, space echo. And I'll put a triplet on there. Bam, 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 bam. Or maybe a fourth. One, two, three, four. Maybe for this is better. Get a little bit more tension. Play something on uh, the XD. And turn on the beats. I got sounds on the uh, octave track as well, something like this. opportunities to do different things. Now with the multi-clock, obviously, what I like about the multi-clock is the fact that I can now easily turn things off and have the tension still built. So let's turn off the music again, which is on track three here. Go. Off. And always add a little bit of space on your sounds. Switch it over. Make it a little bit darker. And back with the beats, two, three, and... Now with relatively not so many ingredients, you can actually just steer your track in a certain direction. Also a thing that I do, sometimes I find it scary, but I'll do it, is I'll just turn everything off but the TBO3. As long as I've got my delay going, I maybe put a lot, a lot of repeats on this one. All right, turn everything off. Switch the waveform. Resonance. So it's a bit of sound design that you need to do on the fly, but not, don't let anything just uh, start to dominate the sound. simple thing. Now if you want to go a little bit, uh, want to go in a little bit more musical, you can actually opt to have your bass note play something else. First let's play the beat. So now we'll just change the uh, Model D, the sequence that I'm playing here. I'm gonna go in, smooth up. Nice, so that's gone. Now 
Nice, let's record that. That's wrong. I'll do that again. Again. I'll open the filter, you'll hear clearly what I'm doing. I'm liking it. Another sound on the Yoko track. These are my B segment sounds. I just categorize my tracks into A, B, and C. A is the drums, obviously, and the bass line. Something you can dance to and will remain in your brain. But that's it. All right. Let's uh, turn stuff down. That's a drop. Now I've got a lot of stuff happening. So it will be logical for me to just turn stuff down. That is eating away at your brain immediately. Which means filter down the Model D. And I'm going to turn it off now. There you go. Because the bass line is making it very melodic and it's taking the track into a chord structure, that's the first thing that I want to take out on my drop so that it remains sparse. Second one that I'm going to lower is the filter on the TBO3. And because I just don't want to just play sequences, I'm going to play something again on uh, this bad boy. Long release. Right, lower. So you build tension with sounds coming in different directions. You don't need to be a, a, a virtuoso or a, a, a prodigy. As long as you can do something. Obviously, I'm just playing all of the white keys here in a minor scale. So that's a C chord. Okay. Now to up a little bit more tension. So I think it's now it's time to add a little bit more space to it. So I'm going to open the reverb and the delay. Actually, the delay. Nice. Let's add a kick, shall we?
drums with the right. And now we can add complete our drop. Two, three, four, bass, two, three, four. Nice one. Let's see if we can add even more. Maybe. Tension. Tibo three. So this is how you glue stuff together, you know? Do something here, think of something there. Think of something here, add something there. Just don't, you have to mimic and mask a little bit that stuff is taking turns, if you will. All right, so, I guess it's about that time to uh, lower this, lower this, go back in. And that's something, <laughs> sometimes that happens. I had it happen to me before. I'm like, yeah, let's go. And then I just forget to uh, turn on my kick. But do that again. So, boom. People will like it. So, happy accidents. Because I've got my baseline still ready to enter with my kick. So, let's do that. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, and. Ah, party time. Right. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Ah, I really, 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 really enjoyed it. That was five times really. Was it four or five times? <laughs> well, you know what? I really do enjoy when I get into the zone. I mean, my energy levels are all like, ah, what's going on? You know what I mean? Um, I wish COVID was gone completely. You know, I'm so over it and I'm so ready to perform for you guys again. I just want to get out there. I just want to just like throw all that stuff into, on, uh, into the universe. Did I hit the mic? I guess I did. Well, the thing is, um, when you work with synthesizers, it's. I saw a, I saw a meme on on on, the, on, on, uh, on Facebook, I think it was, where um, it says like, "What if synthesizers are using us to play?" That was like a funny meme that I saw, but it's it's pretty much true. You know, when I'm working with the synthesizers, I need to get into a zone where the whole sort of like uh, sound takes over. Um, it's, it, predictability is gone, uh, creativity just flows. Um, obviously, it's not like I'm uh, running through a cornfield in slow motion, like, ah, I'm so inspired. But it, it does get me to a realm where I feel that that raw, rudimentary transference of energy onto uh, the listener. And when they pick up on that, it's just like, you know, nobody knows what's going to come next. And that is one of the most important and one of the most cool things that happens when you play an electronic live set. Now, um, I'm raving and ranting about it, but this stuff is preaching to the choir when it comes to band members, when it comes to people that play in an orchestra. So that's, they already know this. So this is not like, a, um, this might not be like a, <laughs> uh, the best invention since a sliced bread. But in the end of the day, I do believe that it's cool to look at it that way. Now, I hope that you enjoyed it. Links to all um, the equipment uh, are not in the fold below, which means if you see the pages that show more, click more, the page will open, you'll see that. Also, links to certain books that help to help me to get into uh, terms to where frequencies lie and how to um, manage your levels when you're not looking at a screen and you need to just do it with those things at the side of your head called ears. At the, which were intended to listen to music. Um, as well as uh, links to Bandcamp, my music's on there. So if you like the jam, uh, most definitely in the next coming weeks, I'll upload it there. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, Patreon is something where we connect a nice community of like-minded adult uh, people. It's day DIY stuff. It's um, jamming stuff. It's just tips and tricks. It's um, show and tell. It's you know, it's just a community of like-minded people getting into this thing that we love 
Dollars music production, or at least talking about it. So, in that sense, I'd like to say peace out to everyone that's really been supporting. I mean, as you can see, the channel has been undergoing a certain growth, and that's absolutely amazing. So, my um, uh, philosophy on why I do this stuff is getting out there, and you guys like what I do. So, thanks ever so much for um, yeah for your subscription. Um, okay, well, I guess I'll see you. I guess what the hell is that? I guess I'll see you next week on another video.